All right, welcome to the Covis Codex. Thanks for being the first entry. Yeah. And your name is? I'm Shauna Dorsey. Shauna Dorsey. Yeah. And where do you work? I work for Interface Web School. That is great. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us for this initial inaugural episode of the Covis Codex. Yeah. And um, what it is is just a simple interview thing where we ask you questions not about your job. Mm-hmm. You know, we're trying to get to know the real you <laughs> and, and not who you're trying to pitch. Sure. So, we're going to start off with some really simple questions like, where did you grow up? So, I grew up in Omaha, in uh, North Omaha, near like 42nd and Sorensen Parkway. And my family moved a few times, but always in and around North Omaha. And which high school did you go to? I went to Omaha North High. Omaha what? Omaha North. North? Yep. Okay. Cool. I don't know anything about the schools here. <laughs> I'm from the East Coast, so. Yeah, it's a, it's a great school. So that is, um, it's known as a, a magnet school. So when I was going there a long time ago, um, that was uh, my first introduction to computers back in, like, early 90s. So <laughs> it's pretty great. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right, who has been the most influential person in your life? Outside of my parents, right? It doesn't matter. If it was your parents, <laughs> I mean... I think that's an easy easy answer, so I'll... Are find, they going to watch this? Is that... They is might. That, oh. They might. So I'll say, yes, my parents, of course, and then yeah, outside give us, of... Give us both, yeah. Outside of my parents, I would say um, it was my third grade teacher. Influential because she... Uh, believed in me (laughs) and uh a few people know that i that i taught myself to be left-handed and she was one of the or the person who supported my dream to make that happen so how do you teach yourself to be left-handed you just start writing you just give up give up on the right side you just say you know what I know that's the dominant side, but I'm going to train this other hand to be able to do it. So, so. are you ambidextrous now? Yeah. You can write with both hands the same? Yeah, not, not well. I don't, I never practice with my right hand. So, I could do almost, I do almost everything else right-handed. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I write left-handed, though. That's great. hmm I'm the same way. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um... What was the last concert you attended? And did you go voluntarily? I did. I went voluntarily. I, uh, it was a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert, actually, and I think that was, like, 2013 at CenturyLink. It was awesome. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm-hmm. Rocking out. Yeah. Did you get good seats? Yeah, pretty could good. Could you see anything? I could see everything. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Awesome. Not too close. A little up in the balconies, so. though. Nice. Balcony. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm-hmm. Uh... Did you have a favorite pet? Yes. It's my current dog, Jax. So I'll send you a photo of him so you can, like, show it right now. Okay. With his little glasses on. <laughs> but he's, he's just really a great dog. I love him. What kind of dog is he? I have no idea. Um, so I sent... Did you just find him somewhere? <laughs> kind of. So I picked him up. Um, I was going to say rented, but that's not the right <laughs> word. I, like, adopted him from... Um, dog.com. <laughs> I adopted him from uh, the Humane Society when he was eight weeks old. And he, had, he was, like, riddled with fleas. This guy was just ridiculous, but just so cute. And so um, I adopted him, and they said he was a rat terrier mix. And uh, I sent in one of those little DNA kits to... Um, they have DNA kits for dogs? Yeah, they do. I can't remember the one I used, but um, it was, like, 50 bucks. He sent it in, take a little mouse swab of the dog. And, uh, they sent it back and, uh, they, not every, every generation was like, we have no idea. (laughs) So I have no idea what this dog is, but he's fun. Cute. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I did a DNA kit, the, uh, 23andMe thing. A what now? 23andMe. Have you heard of that? No, I haven't. Uh, I think it was started by the wife of one of the guys at Google. Okay, cool. And it's like, it's a really huge database of, of uh, DNA and things. So. so you can find out who your ancestors are. You can are. find out what part of the world your ancestors came from. Okay. 
Um, mine apparently came from Africa. Uh-huh. And what diseases you're susceptible to. Oh. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's good to know, I guess. It is. It is. You can take precautions, you know. That's true. Um, all right. Yeah. So, uh, what's the scariest thing you've ever done? <laughs> Quit my job. Uh, <laughs> to, um, but, uh, let's see. Scariest thing I've ever done. Uh, I'm a pretty big risk taker, just FYI. But one of the scariest things I have ever done was... Does that mean you take uh, big risks? Yeah, I am. I just, I try to think through, like, what it is that I want to do, and sometimes the next thing I have to do is a a bit scary, and things that some people probably wouldn't do. That's just how it goes. But, um, yeah, the scariest thing I've ever done was go scuba diving in Mexico. That was scary. Because Mexico is a scary place. It, yeah, I was on one of these little resorts, but I uh, I just don't really know how to swim that well, and so um, that was a little bit scary. You don't know how to swim well, or you don't know how to swim? Not well. Like... Can you float? Is that like where you do this thing, like just lay on your back? Or you, you kind of sit at the top of the water? <laughs> but <laughs> on your back, right? However you could do it. I mean, oh. it's probably easier to do it on your back so you don't drown. Because you could probably float face down, <laughs> but that's going to make breathing difficult. I think I want to change my answer to, I cannot swim. You cannot swim? <laughs> I think that's right. Okay. Because uh, I have no idea what we're talking about or how you would <laughs> go about floating. How do you float while you're alive? I don't know. All right. That is a uh, pretty dangerous. Scuba mm-hmm. diving in Mexico when you can't swim. Yeah. Yeah. But I really wanted to scuba dive. I'm like, you know, swimming, you know, whatever. Fins. You have the fins. You're going, you're going with the group. Tank. Oxygen. It's so you have, the, you have oh, the tanks? Oh, and the, um, you have a little life jacket, too, I think. That a is, life? Nope, that's not right. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have been floating. Yeah, that, <laughs> that would kind of help you float, yeah. <laughs> okay, I think we had we had life jackets on on the way to the um, dive site or right. the whatever. The, while you were site. in the boat. Correct. That makes sense. Then we took those off, put the tanks on and the mask on, and then I started panicking a little bit. I'm like, okay, this is for real. And at no time they asked you, can you swim? They did ask me. They did. And I said, kind of. You said, kind of. I was pretty honest about it. I'm like, not really. That's not really honest. Honest would have been no. (laughs) Well, they give you that little water (laughs) test. So I was swimming around in the pool, like moving and everything in the water. So they were pretty confident with my skills. And I'm like, you know, I can kind of swim, but not really well. So I go in there and he's like, yeah, you'll do fine. It's pretty brave. That's Mexico. Pretty brave. Stupid I think. Yes. Intro for you. Awesome. Uh, what is your favorite meal to cook? Um, do you cook? I do. I do cook. Are you a chef? I would not say a chef. Um, because I'm not very creative. Like, I'll find a couple of good recipes, and then I just cook those all the time. So, um, I love to make the same breakfast all the time. Which is egg whites and pepper jack cheese and um, spinach, mushroom, sun-dried tomatoes, garlic, minced, minced garlic, and um, maybe a little salsa inside of it, too. It's pretty good. Are you forgetting bacon? There's no bacon in there. No bacon. That's horrible. No, no Who bacon. has breakfast without bacon? No bacon in there. Um, also, I like making um, like pan-fried trout with crushed pecans. That's pretty good. Very easy. Like 10 minutes. Just cook it right on skin side down. Ten minutes, twelve minutes, easy. All right, seafood. Mm-hmm. Do you have a crock pot? I do not. Mm-hmm. I love crock pot. Do you have a microwave? Of course I have a microwave. I don't. You don't have a microwave? No. How can you not have a microwave? Don't they come in every house? Like, <laughs> isn't it a part of every house? <laughs> no, I don't have a microwave. Um, so it forces me to like cook things from scratch or like. Yeah. Do you need a microwave? No. I don't Are you want avoiding it for some kind of reason? Just so Were you attacked as a child by no, a microwave or something? Not. No, I just try to make, I try to do my best to try to make good decisions about the food I eat. So it's one of the ways that I kind of force that. So a microwave is kind of like a gateway to bad food habits. Yes, yeah, like, you know, frozen meals and just nu- nuking things all the time. So I just don't do that. Wow. I don't think I've ever met anyone that doesn't have a microwave. I have had several in my house. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, soda or pop? Soda. Thank you. <laughs> pop people are crazy. Um, who has someone in town that you'd like to get coffee with that you haven't? 
I uh, saw so a couple of days ago, I was at this, uh, this leadership Omaha thing and this guy, Stuart Chittenden, I believe is his name. Let me double check. I want to say that right. For you listeners, she's looking on her iPhone. Yes. Sorry. I got to make sure I say this correctly. First, she's going to Facebook. No, I'm just going to... She's liking a few Google. things. <laughs> Posting a selfie. Stuart. I want to say it's pronounced Chittenden. Chittenden. Go ahead. Say it. Stuart Chittenden. He um, hosts something called uh, Squish Talks. So it's all about conversations and meaningful conversations and the importance of conversation. Squish Talks. Yes. In town. In town. That sounds cool. Yeah. All right. What is the last good book you read? Not the Bible. A good book outside of the Bible that I read uh, was probably Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Did you read all of them or yeah. just the first one? I read the whole. There's one like big book that I read a long there's, time ago. There's a big book, yes. That's the That's one got I read. all the books. Ah, there you go. So I read that whole thing. Wow. When was that? Like 2003. It's like my favorite book I've read since 2003. Wow. Yeah. I've never read the book. Um, I'm a big fan of the movie, even though most people hate it. Yeah. I think I most people who hate the movie read the book. Right. That's kind of how it goes. That's the problem, yeah. Yeah. If you know better, you'll hate the movie. Yeah. I mean, because I thought the same thing where I was like, well, that's not how I pictured it, you know? So mm-hmm. it's just tough to, you know, pick, sorry, to pick things the way that people imagine them, of course. All right. Have you watched uh, Lord of the Rings? I have. I've never read the books, so I think the movies are amazing. Pretty great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How about uh, Game of Thrones? What? Game of Thrones? What is that? Really? <laughs> I've Game heard of, of it. Thrones? <laughs> I've heard of it, but I've never watched an episode. Is it a series? It's a book. Okay. A series. And, and a like TV a show on HBO, yes. Never. Oh, I don't have cable either, so, yeah. It's the 90s. Come on. You don't need cable. It's the 90s? Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, that's I've been, true. That's I've been, true. I've been saying that since the 90s. <laughs> I got you. It just means technology is around. There's other ways. That's true. No, but I've never I've never seen it. Never watched an episode. Wow. Well, if you like Lord of the Rings, you'd probably like Game of Thrones. Okay. There's good stuff in there. Um, is there anything you'd like to pitch? Um, well, so, you know, with Interface School, we're running a few classes this coming what is Interface Spring. School? I don't even know. Interface. <laughs> we uh, we do web developer training in town, so we, we kind of do a few things. We help people who are looking at transitioning into new careers do that. We help them do that. We um, help local businesses create websites with uh, through our students' work in a class. Um, and, yeah, we do a lot of partnering with businesses in the community. So we're hosting four different sessions this coming spring, including um, a course in partnership with Why Will It's a WordPress course and a .NET course and uh, Java and a front-end web development track that will also include some uh, design elements, so how to make things beautiful and also how to create. I'm sorry, do the, I'm sorry. (laughs) How to make things beautiful and how to write the code. Making websites beautiful is very important. Yeah. So thank you for teaching people how to do that. (laughs) Thank the instructors. Yes, Todd Kramer and Colin Forrester. Right. Thank them for me. Okay. That's very important. Thanks, Todd and Colin. (laughs) Thanks, Todd and Colin. (laughs) But yeah, that and, um, you know, we also host a couple. We host this event at Aromas and Benson every first Tuesday, 8 a.m. called Coffee and Code. So that will be coming up here too. Coffee and code, is that like beer and code? You just sit around drinking coffee and programming? It's not like that. It should be like that, but it's not. that would be fun, too. Um, but uh, we have a monthly sponsor, so basically if you show up, you get free coffee and pastries, whatever you want. And um, we have a presenter. They present for 15 minutes on a topic of their choice. So, so free coffee and pastries, mm-hmm. and you learn something. And you hopefully learn something. That yeah. sounds so great. Mm-hmm. I should go to one of those. Yeah. Or two. All right. uh, Anything else you want to discuss? I don't think so. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, thank you for being here. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in and listening. And uh, thank you, Shauna Dorsey from Interface. Check out our website, interface. Interfaceschool.com. School.com. There you go. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks.